Good morning. We've got a day in the life, full day of eating. You're going to get to see what I eat to get absolutely shredded. It's time. Uh, the off-season push-up went incredibly well, but I tend to time things from a perspective of how long will this take me to get all the way in and what will I have to do in terms of the rate of loss to actually get there. So in my opinion, the people always, always lose certain body parts to get in true stage condition simply from not having an adequate timeline set in place to get in shape. So what I mean by that is they simply don't give themselves enough time to get a stage lean. Now, that is not a mistake I was making. So my prep has officially started last week on Sunday. And today, you're gonna get to see all the changes, what I was eating before, what I'm eating now, how much body weight I've actually lost, and how easy it actually is to get in shape when you actually off season properly. So stay tuned and I've got a big day to show you. I'm actually fending for myself because Meg's away in Romania. So you're gonna get to see what I do to look after myself. Meal number one, super simple. Super, super simple. Cream of rice and 70 grams of whey. Isolate. Now we've got the cookies and cream, cream of rice. And sometimes I do like to mix a little bit of baby rice in it just for texture, but this is the current go-to, the cookies and cream. Now, rice is ready to go, which is my sushi rice. Now, look at the water here, super clear and clean. If your rice does not have clear water, you need to wash it and get the starch out of it. Not only it's going to taste better, but it actually will digest better if you wash it first. Chocolate pistachio is absolutely incredible. So meal number one is extremely simple. I actually make quite low volume cream of rice and then I have 60 grams of whey and 20 grams of almond butter. Now, previously, this meal was 130 grams of cream of rice and 35 grams of almond butter. So it is a decent shift. And a, not, a, not a massive reduction in calories, but it's enough to get your body moving. There we go. Look at that, perfect. A little bit of cinnamon. I actually want to show a new product from Chain by JP. It's the NMN. Any of you that guys that have been doing any research on health salts, nicotine, phenide. I might, I might have got the name wrong, but anyway, this is an excellent supplement for longevity. And it's definitely something that if you have the finances to have something additional in place on top of your health subs that are priority, like Love Heart, Vital Support, um, and Amiga Pro, I think this is definitely worth having as well. So get this in. The essentials, in my opinion, are always gonna be Amiga Pharma Pro, Heart Care, which I do think are literally top of the list when it comes to your health subs. And then you've got Love Heart, and your vital support. Every single morning, I have 10 grams of glutamine and five grams of creatine every single day. Now, creatine's not only great for performance, but also great for brain function. Um, it's actually somewhat of a nootropic. Glutamine, massive, massive benefits for actual gut health. So these are both supplements that I use every morning with no fail before I actually eat. Now, a couple more of essential subs for me personally. Digest Pharma Pro and Ensure. Every single morning, I do take them before I actually eat. And I do think it's mega essential. When you're eating as much calories as we do, our stomach's not designed to actually process that much food. So you do need a digestive enzyme in place if you want to keep things somewhat optimal.
So, check-in day was actually yesterday where I took some pictures. You're not going to get to see that because it's never the best look when you first start to diet. Um, but my diet officially started last week on Sunday, so it's been four, seven days um, on what I would call my proper prep. And we are pretty much 10 pounds down, which is sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But to be honest, it hasn't really taken any effort to do this, to be honest. It's been very much effortless now. Diet changes. My original diet on training day was 5,382 calories, 401 grams of protein, 823 grams of carbs, 54 grams of fats. On rest day, 4,434 calories, 413 grams of protein, 538 grams of carbs, 70 grams of fats. That was my end point to the push-up. Food wasn't crazy high, but to be honest, in this day and age, people use high food as a bit of a flex, and I think that's probably, I'm not gonna insult people and say it's the dumbest thing that they can do, but it literally is. If you need 7,000 calories to grow, and you're not size of Big Ramy, something is lacking in your training. People that generally need crazy amounts of food to grow and nothing happens, that's just down to lack of adequate training stimulus or lack of recovery. So if you find yourself putting all this food away and it's doing nothing, and arguably you're not really making progress that you should be, you need to ask yourself the question why, because that should not happen, ever. I don't care who you are. Don't get me wrong, for some people you will need more food, um, I am working with guys who need crazy amounts of food, but they're still growing, especially when you come out of the diet initially. I like, don't really need that much food to grow. And they're guys that are weighing 120 kilo, even some guys that were like 115 kilo on stage, stage lean. So if you're not 240 pounds on stage and you're like someone that's like 220, 210 and you're bragging about the crazy amounts of food you're eating, what are you going to do to get to 250? Are you going to eat 10,000 calories? I mean, that's just common sense and logic, right? So another misconception that people always have is that more food will lead to more growth. That could not be any further away from the truth. You should always want to maximize and get the most from least. That is with your training and your food. So more food is not going to lead to more growth. If you eat above and beyond your calorie surplus, you're just going to get fat your body will not know what to do with it. And believe it or not, the surplus that you need to be in to actually gain muscle tissue is not really that high. So just be mindful of that. Now, analogy I like to use for this is, it's like setting a campfire, right? If you try and set a fire up and you throw a massive tree on it, you just put the fire out, right? But if you keep throwing little bricks of wood on it, the fire will only get bigger. So just be mindful of that. Now, start point for my diet. And I will do a little comparison here. Um, training day, 4,514 calories, 387 grams of protein. The reason why protein is just down a little bit, that's just from trace carbohydrates that have come down. Um, carbohydrates, 638 grams of carbs, fats, 46 grams. Uh, and then my rest day is 3,909 calories, 407 grams of protein, 442 grams of carbs, 57 grams of fats. Um, so food isn't that that high. However, we are a week in. I am down from 272 down to 263 today. And I have already had to do two high days where I have actually had an extra 200 grams of carbohydrates on both of these days, on, on rest days. So as you can imagine, my body is already on fire. I haven't increased my steps. My steps are still the same. Uh, the only thing that's changed is I actually just feel a lot better and my training performance and the energy in the gym has actually improved. So as you can imagine, my deficit is also driven by me just generally feeling better um, and not feeling quite sluggish. So that's that. Now, some people uh, out of the videos that I posted on Instagram and some of the pictures, some people are saying, well, you, you, you're still very, very lean, blah, blah, blah. It's like... Yeah, I'm lean for your eyes, but that's not the standard that I'm actually aiming for. Like, I need to be completely skinless. And for me to be able to do that, I need I need to make sure that adequate timeline is planned. 
um, to be able to get a transparent skin and thin skin. So that's the plan. Right, my people. Here we have 500 grams of rice, raw weight. Now what I do, I weigh it before cooking and then I weigh it again after. And what I do, I get a tall figure and I divide it by 50. And that gives me an accurate, an accurate weight per 10 grams of rice. So 10 grams of rice is 27.5 grams raw weight to cook weight. So 100 grams of rice is gonna be 275 grams. Now, the reason why I weigh it raw is pretty simple. I can make my rice weigh 400 grams per 100 grams if I want to, or 270. Now, as you can imagine, in a contest prep or a diet phase, that discrepancy could be that large over across a whole day that it could potentially throw you out of a deficit or put you in a deficit. And unless you measure in your water exactly how much you're adding to that rice every day, and you're measuring your rice exactly, how are you gonna know what your rice actually is if you're not actually measuring it? So it's a little bit of common sense, to be honest. Um, and it's just what I do to make sure that it is accurate enough. Now for meal two, I either have 200 grams of chicken or I have 300 grams of prawns. So today, I actually fancy prawns. So we are gonna do prawns. And before anyone asks, this is a casserole dish. It keeps the rice nice and warm throughout the day instead of leaving it in the rice cooker. So nice and locked in, no air. And then it's, uh, yeah, it's ideal. Right. So I'm actually going to weigh the prawns as well because sometimes they under, undercook it. Exactly why I weigh it. They say 150 grams, but they actually undercut you by 10 grams. Stealing my gains! Morrison should be ashamed of yourself. You've got to be strategic with like the pieces you pick from the pineapple to make sure you get your weight correct. Beautiful. 50 grams. At the moment, because my appetite is not the best. And to be honest, I want to keep my midsection tight. I am making sure that my food is actually very low volume. So my pre-workout meal, I'm actually doing half meat at the moment. And then I'm actually going to do half MPS max. So what I actually do is have a serving of my chicken, which is 100 grams of chicken. And then I actually do other half from my MPS by Trend by JP, which is a perfect protein source that you can actually take in as well. Now, looking at the judging criteria at the moment, the guys that are getting rewarded are not necessarily guys that are the biggest, it's more so the quality. So my word of advice to anyone guys is, one, don't get fat, two, do not blow out your midsection. If your midsection is blown and you want to be a great bodybuilder, you can literally forget it. And we've seen that happen over and over again with time. Guys that are necessarily smaller, just better condition, better midsection, beat guys who are generally better bodybuilders just haven't done the homework. A pre-workout choice of veggie, we've got some kimchi. Again, fermented food, amazing for your gut health. So I tend to have 
around 75 grams per day of that, um, every single day, no exceptions. So I've got 30 grams of a pre-workout meal. One thing you'll notice with a pre-workout meal, I generally put less veg in it. Reason for that is I want this to be fully digested within an hour so I can actually train and get stuck into my session. If you're looking for an alternative to kimchi, you can, you can pretty much use any other fermented food. So it could be something like kefir, kefir, if you want to say it in a Polish accent. Um, but it could literally be anything that's fermented. It could also be yogurt uh, to a some degree. I think some people do have issues with yogurt, but if you're fine with it, it could be an option for you. Um, so there's definitely other options if you don't particularly like kimchi yourself. That's my MPS Max and the digestive enzymes down the hatch, as they would call it. So now it's time for the actual pillow cut meal to go down. One addition that I forgot to a pre-workout meal actually, nearly forgot, is two caramel rice cakes, 20 grams of carbs worth. Like I said, I'm keeping food volume down, so that's the reason for having the extra rice cakes instead of just having extra rice. And it's just something with a bit of different texture, which is nice. Prepare for leg day, then watch the greatest of all time. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> it's me, shut up. Right, so 125 grams of cream of rice. And with that, I'm actually going to use 380 mils of water. So we've got five grams of creatine extra we've got serving a pumpage i have 20 grams and then we've got 10 grams of glutamine as well now like i mentioned before i do have creatine and glutamine twice a day on training day and then just on rest day i have it first thing in the morning that's it so i do like 300 mils of water with this as well just for extra hydration before training and generally i start sipping this in the car and i finish it halfway through the journey to the gym which normally takes around 20 minutes. How do you like cream of rice? I cannot stand like overcooked cream of rice. For some reason, for me, it doesn't digest well when it's overcooked. Do you find that? Yeah, so it's like, it needs to be like angel of light custard. Just right. I don't need extra salt, but I do need extra salt because I'm a sweaty man, especially for legs. I like to keep extra salt going in. Even though Sustain already has a hydration formula, I need extra, trust me. It's a big leg day today, so we need it in. And a little bit more water. All right, toilet time and it's game time. Before you train legs, you have to have a tactical toilet trip. If you don't, it could be dangerous. So, today is our quad dominant leg day. Ah! Post workout meal of champions. You'll have seen me making this already at home, but I'm gonna show you anyway whilst I eat. I've got 125 cream of rice, 60 grams of white isolate, cinnamon, two grams to be specific, two grams of salt, and 150 strawberries. So 
this is going to go down the hatch, and then in an hour and a half, meal number five, and then meal number six right before bed. Now, some people tend to eat the last meal quite further away from bedtime, but to me, it literally makes no difference. Um, I can eat quite a large meal before bed, and it doesn't impact me whatsoever, and I think that's just down to years and years of pounding the food away. Um, your body gets used to certain things, such as being able to sleep with high amounts of, uh, high volumes of food in. Um, food isn't high at the moment, not for me anyway, but it's at a decent level still. So, I do prefer to spread my meals out as much as possible across the day, and I still prefer to have six meals over five. Personally, I think that works better, better for me. Um, I just tend to wake up and always eat a little bit early. I don't really like to spend too long fasting, even in a diet phase. I don't really believe it makes any difference. Uh, some people need it for satiety. I personally don't. I like being hungry, so do what you've got to do to get the job done. There's no rules to this. So meal number five is going down and we've got good old classic chicken and rice. Bodybuilders staple of foods. Nice and simple, but it definitely does the job. I go through phases to be honest with chicken. Sometimes I'll not even eat it for months and months and months. And then other times I'm actually all right with it. So just depends what mood I'm in. I guess, uh, as to whether I do like chicken or not. Also, it also depends on how it's cooked. I think air fried chicken, when it's not overcooked, is actually pretty decent. Still smells all right. So, I generally like to pull it apart rather than chop it into little pieces. So, I've got pulled chicken with my rice. And then I will throw in the pan, mix it all together, add some veg, mushrooms, and then some fermented kimchi, hot and smoky. That's how I like them, hot and smoky. Another couple of essential supplements from Trade by JP that I'd literally stand by is vitamin D3 and K2. If you are living in England, and we don't have the luxury of sun, I can promise you, you will more than likely be deficient in vitamin D3 and K2. So this is a supplement that anyone can use, and I definitely highly advise using this. If you are experiencing some, especially in the winter times, in the winter days, experiencing more fatigue, and potentially even feeling a little bit more on the downer side, this is something that you may need. So get it on. Now second of all, now second supplement is the estro, con estro control. Now, if you find yourself that you are aromatizing heavily as a natural athlete or assisted athlete, this is something that is a godsend. It really, really works well. DIM has been shown to actually support uh, and management of your estrogen, which is amazing. Um, and obviously it's got some broccoli extra and other bits in there that really do help. So highly advise this. Make sure you use it first thing in the morning, not for your bed. You don't want to be having any vitamin D pre-bed it will keep you awake. If you want to moisten up your ice, because we like it moist, add a little bit of water to it. It makes a world of a difference. Meal number five which I'm going to have in about 20 minutes, 
is 225 grams of chicken, 75 grams of rice, 50 grams of veg, 25 grams of kimchi, 75 grams of pineapple. The last meal, we will have 75 grams of rice again, and then I will have 225 grams of fillet steak. Now, the wife is away in Romania, looking after our clients, so I'm fending for myself, and we've got to use steak from the supermarket that I got from Amazon delivery, which is not the most ideal, but as you can see, the dogs are licking the lips, so they will definitely make use out of all the scraps and extra fat. But guys, that is a full day of eating uh, for me. This is what I do to lose body fat. And again, one thing you have to understand is the reason why I'm able to do this so efficiently is because I firstly have had a huge push into my off season. You cannot have a successful contest or a fat loss phase without first having a successful off season. The off season is what will set up your fat loss phase or contest prep. It's so essential. And I think this is where most people get it wrong. So guys, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching and take care and peace out. I'll speak to you again soon.